What's up, LTD addicts? Happy holidays. I've got some breaking news for you. AppSumo has just announced their top tools of 2023, what they dub the tools of the year. Now, the way this works is hundreds of tools, maybe even thousands of tools get released on AppSumo every single year, but they narrow it down to the top three. So you know out of hundreds or thousands of tools, these apps must be pretty special. There's actually a fourth tool that's selected by you, the community, but voting closed for that last week, so you won't be able to participate anymore because the winner's already been selected. Of course, I'll have a link to all of the winners down below, but this video is actually about just one out of the four tools. That's because AppSumo reached out to me to make a video about active pieces, an open source Zapier replacement. It's right up my alley, and I'm super excited to show you how it works. Now, before I do that, I need to let you know that this video is sponsored by AppSumo and even better, AppSumo is bringing back active pieces for a 72 hour flash sale to celebrate it as the tool of the year or one of the tools of the year. So definitely check the links down below so you can grab an LTD for active pieces before it's too late. Remember, it only lasts 72 hours. All right, let's get into the app. So here's the active pieces website. And as you can see from the movie that's playing here, we're gonna be creating flows to automate tasks that we don't wanna deal with in our everyday life. The example they give here is actually a little bit otherworldly. We're gonna go ahead and on the hour, ask ChatGBT to go ahead and tweet for us. So you could literally do anything. Your imagination is only gonna be your limit here with Active Pieces. And to further boost that idea, Active Pieces is open source, which means the community is developing Active Pieces actively. So new stuff is going to be coming out all the time. And anybody, if you're a developer, you can get involved in this project, contribute to it and get it to do exactly what you want. There's little bits of code they call pieces, which are those automations, those connections. So really this platform is just in its infancy. It's going to be exploding in the years to come. People are very, very excited about active pieces. So that's one of the reasons that I'm so gung ho about grabbing this LTD. Now, sure, you could download the source code. It's on GitHub right here. I could download this and run it on a server, but then I've got the tech overhead of actually maintaining it. And then I've also got to pay for that server. The best deal right now is their hosted version. And if you look at their pricing, you can see that if we wanted to do, let's say 50,000 tasks per month, it's gonna be a hundred bucks a month. And these are actually decent prices compared to something like Zapier. For example, Zapier is gonna charge you $289 billed annually. If I switch over to monthly, it's even more, 433 for the same 50,000 tasks. So why pay that annually when I can pay once on AppSumo and get 200,000 tasks per month, normally $300, but I pay even less than that with my AppSumo deal. So in my opinion, the value is definitely there right now for the LTD. The link again down below, go ahead and check that out if you like what you see in the rest of the video. Let's get into the app. Let me show you how this thing actually works. I've got a fresh active pieces account here and let's go ahead and build some flows together. So you can see on the left-hand sidebar, I'm under flows and then this next category over here is your folders. So you can actually organize the automations into different categories if you like. And then we can see our flows inside of each category right here. So I'm under all flows. I'm going to create a new flow. Before I do this, I'm going to point out to speed up the video a little bit. I went ahead and I connected some of my existing apps. These are tools that I use in my business. There's hundreds of them available for active pieces, but these are the tools that I've gone ahead and connected ahead of time. All right, so let's go ahead and build a new flow here. And the first thing it does is pops open these templates. So you can grab one of these templates to begin with if you'd like. I'm just gonna close this out and build from scratch so I can teach you a little bit about how this works. And that way you can get your brain working for all of the things that you'd like to accomplish for your business. Every single flow kicks off with something called a trigger. A trigger is gonna be an event that kicks off a chain reaction of other events that you want to occur. So in the first example I'm gonna give here, I'm gonna go ahead and find a trigger. You can see them listed all along. There's a lot of them, right? You can choose any of these different apps or services as triggers. For me, I'm gonna choose the Ghost CMS. That's what I use to host my daveswift.com website. I'm gonna go ahead and choose Ghost as my trigger. And what I want to actually begin this flow is when someone is added as a member to this website. So I'm gonna choose member added as the actual trigger. Now, next up, I need to actually give Active Pieces access to my website. I've already done that to speed things up, but if you wanted to create a new connection, just hit new connection right here. And what I love is that it actually gives you the step-by-step -step directions to make the connection. 
This seems like it should be table stakes for an app like this, but so often it kind of takes you out of that creative headspace that I was talking about a moment ago where you're thinking about building the flows and it's like one part of your brain. And then all of a sudden you've got to go searching for an API key. And it really just kind of, it's jarring to, to me anyway, maybe not to everybody, but uh, to have to go back and forth between that. So I love that it gives you step-by-step -step directions. Really, really handy. But like I said, I already did this ahead of time so I can use one of my pre-save connections. Just a quick note on connections and the AppSumo plans. You get 20 connections with tier one and you get unlimited with tier two and tier three. So if that's a deciding factor for you, you can think about how many apps you actually wanna connect up to active pieces. They go kind of fast, like I added five in the blink of an eye. So I definitely would probably go with at least a tier two because you never know when you wanna add an extra app and you don't wanna be limited by that connection limit. All right, so back to building our flow. We've now got our trigger configured. So when Ghost CMS goes ahead and adds a new member, then something else is gonna happen. By the way, if you're just playing around with this and you wanna change triggers, there's a little button right over here. When you click this, it's gonna take you back to that screen where you can choose a new trigger. For now, I am good to go though. I'm gonna go ahead and choose an action to occur next. So I'm gonna click this plus button and I'm gonna go ahead and search for the app that I want to take the action. You're actually going to see a different list of apps inside of triggers versus actions because not every app has triggers and I think every app does have actions. So you'll see more listed in the actions list than you will inside of the triggers list. All right, next up, I'm going to connect my email marketing tool. Now, I could be using something like MailChimp here. I could be using MailerLite. I could be using Active Campaign, I believe is one. It's not. I could be using uh, ConvertKit, I believe is one. There's a lot of different mainstream platforms that are available already for active pieces. However, I happen to be using some open source software called Modic. So I'm going to connect that up. And next I get to choose what action happens. So what I want to have happen is when someone is added on Ghost, I want them to be added on Modic, pretty simple. So I'll choose create contact. I'll connect up my Modic instance. And now I can populate this with some data. Now in order to actually have the data, something has to happen on the first step. And that's an integral part to understanding how the active pieces flows actually work. So data that occurs on one step is then available to the next step. So if you need to get something, you need to have a source to go ahead and find it. Now I could go ahead and add a member to Ghost, but what I'm gonna do here is just use mock data, which is gonna simulate someone signing up for my Ghost website. Now this data that we see down here, this big kind of ugly block of code, don't worry, we don't need to do anything with that. We can go ahead and find that data inside of Modic. So under title, I could go ahead and find if there's a title even available, probably not, because that's not something that people would sign up with. Really, the fields that I'm concerned about might be first name, which I'll just go ahead and search for name and insert that. So you can see I'm not actually typing any code or dealing with any code at all. It's just these placeholders, these variables. The, the name is going to be populated by whatever someone added inside of Ghost. And the other field that's important to me is going to be email address, right? So I'm going to go ahead and search for with this selected, I'm gonna search for email. And here is the placeholder text. I'll add that. There's other fields that I could fill in that would be related to Modic, but nothing that's gonna be coming from Ghost. So I'm essentially done with this. Someone signs up on Ghost and they're added to Modic. I can test this step. And as we can see here, the test was successful. If I go ahead and log into my Modic instance, which is actually fresh, just created for this video, I'm all logged in. I'm gonna go to my contacts here. And sure enough, I've got first last as the name and my at emailaddress.com as the email address that was added. So this is exactly what we saw over here inside of Active Pieces. That way I know my flow is working. So testing a very important part. So this is a very simple flow, but I'm all done. This is what I want it to do. In order to turn this on, I first wanna give it a name, right? Let's go ahead and under untitled here, I'll choose a rename. I'll just do ghost to Modic. There we go. And you can see that it's been saving this as a draft, but I can go ahead and click publish up here to actually turn it on. Now it's on because this switch is showing me that it's actively running. So if someone signs up on my website right now, they'll automatically be added over to Modic. I can turn it off by just go ahead and toggling that switch. If I decide that I actually want to add another step in here, I can continue editing without affecting the running flow. So I'll hit this plus button to add an intermediary step and the one that I'm gonna add is actually to verify that the email address exists. So I'm gonna go ahead and add Clearout, which is an AppSumo deal that I picked up a few years ago, and I'll have it instantly verify the email. 
and I've already connected clear out as well. We'll go ahead and search for that data under email. Same step that we took a moment ago for Modic. So it's just pulling. I don't even need to change the Modic instance, right? It's pulling from the same source. I can test this out as well. It tested successfully and found that this email address did not exist. Status is invalid. So that's good. My at email.com is probably not a real person. Okay, so now I've added some complexity to this flow here. You can see I've got this verification step. So I probably want some different things to happen based on the decision of the verification. Now, before I show you how to modify that, I want to point out that our original draft is still running. We are now in draft mode, essentially. So you can see here, I'm working on a draft. If I wanted to publish these changes right now, I can go ahead and hit publish, but otherwise it's still going right from step one being member added to step two being creating the contact on Modic because I've not hit publish yet. If at any point I wanted to revert to those previous steps, I can click up on draft and go over to the published version. That way I can easily compare versions. And if I decide I wanted to edit the flow again, I'll click edit right here. For now, I'm gonna go back to my draft version. All right, let's add even more complexity here because if someone's email does not verify, I certainly don't want them added to Modic, right? That step should not continue. In fact, I preferably would not even like them to be added to Ghost. I'd like to remove that user. So how can we accomplish these things? I'm gonna add in a new action here after the verification. The next step that I'm gonna add is called a branch, which is going to help me decide what happens based on the results of an outcome. You can see here that I've got a true or false branch. So if something happens, one step will happen. If something else happens, another step will happen. So the value that I'm gonna be using to assess this is going to be the instant verify, and the data is going to be the status. If the status contains valid, then I want the user added to Modic. So I'm just gonna drag this over to true. Okay, so as my flow stands right now, when someone's added to my ghost website, I'll use clear out to check if their email address is for real. If it is, they get added over to Modic. Let's go ahead and publish this and let's test it out for real. So here's my ghost website. I'm going to go ahead and just show you that I've already deleted the contact inside of Modic. So we have no contacts inside of Modic. I'm going to add an email address in here and click subscribe. And I use a double opt-in process over on Ghost, So I actually need to verify that this is going to be a real email address before it's even added to Ghost. So here's that double opt-in. I'm going to go ahead and confirm sign up. And now I'm in. I've joined my email list over on DaveSwift.com, which you should do right now. But as I reload Modic here, there's, there's no contact showing up. So what gives? Is something broken? Well, actually, everything works perfectly. Because if I check the results of this particular run inside of ClearOut, you can see that the status was not valid. It was deemed a catch-all address, which is not a re real email address. It's just an email that's set up to receive all emails sent to a particular domain. So because of that, the contact was never sent to Modic, which is great. That's exactly what I wanted to have happen. Now I could change my flow to include catch-all addresses if I like, and maybe I'll try that. Let's go ahead and back into the editor. I'll choose my flow. I'll click on step three, which is the branch. That's where that decision is made. Currently, the value has to be valid. I could also change it to be catch-all, right? So I could do or, and I'm just gonna repeat everything I did, instant verify status contains catch-all, and I'll hit publish. So this way, a valid email address and a catch-all email address will go through, but an invalid or fake email will not. So let's go ahead and test this out one more time. I'll do active pieces, which is definitely not a real email address that I have at clientamp.com. Choose subscribe. Here's my double opt-in. I'll confirm. And now I'm signed up to the ghost website. We'll go over to Modic and hit refresh. And sure enough, this time it went through. We can see the run results over here inside of active pieces going to runs. And I can see that it succeeded here, which just means not that the contact was added, but that there was no errors inside of the flow. Let's go ahead and see the details. And we can see that there's check marks all the way through. That's because the branch detected that it was a catch-all address. So it passed it over to Modic, exactly what we wanted to have happen. Now I could certainly add some more tasks over to the false section if I wanted to. You get the idea. There's really no limit here to how much processing we can do with this simple form submission. It's actually pretty cool how easy it is to accomplish all of these tasks. I'm back over on the Active Pieces website under the Pieces menu. Pieces are the name that Active Pieces gives to the integrations that it currently works with. There's 154 currently available, and you can search through them here. 
anytime you're considering a tool like this, you wanna make sure that it works with the software you actually use. So for example, Banner Bear, this is a really cool application that will automatically generate uh, banners or featured images for blog posts on your website. So you can see that the action it supports is to create an image. There's no triggers for Banner Bear. Tr Banner Bear cannot go ahead and start a flow by itself. But if we look at an app like, let's say, Calendly, it has triggers, but no actions. So in this case, we can do something else when an event is scheduled or when an event is canceled. Maybe you have an automatic follow-up email that you want to send when a Calendly event is canceled. You can go ahead and set that up with active pieces. But you're not limited to the 154 pieces that are available. If you're a developer or you just find another piece on the internet, you can easily add it to your account. To do so, go ahead and click up here on your username and then go under My Pieces. Here, you can add a piece. Now, you'll need to develop this or find someone else who has, and you can simply add it. It will show up inside of your flows. I expect that at some point, there's going to be a huge collection of third-party pieces that you can easily add to active pieces. Now, beyond building your own pieces, you can simply add code to your flow. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up our existing one here, but it could certainly be one from scratch. And I'm gonna add a bit of code right here for false. So under false, I'll simply type in code, and you can see that I can add Node.js or TypeScript code with NPM to any single action that's happening inside of my flows. We make this full screen and you can see everything that's available to us. All right, I wanna wrap up the video by just showing you some of the core pieces that are included. These are really powerful and things that you might not think about using because you just think about different apps and connecting them together. But there's a lot of nice little steps built into active pieces that can make these flows really come to life. So I'm gonna create a new one here. And closing out the template selector, I've got a brand new flow. So I'm gonna start off with a trigger. If I click on triggers here, I can choose the core selector. And this will tell me that I can either set a trigger to be on a schedule, such as every hour, every day, every week, I can have something run. They even allow you to use cron expressions, so that's very cool. Or I can have the trigger be a webhook. That way, if there's not an existing piece for the app that you wanna use, but it can send webhooks, you can go ahead and configure that. I just went ahead and added my ghost CMS as the trigger again, and I'm gonna show you some more core features that you can use as actions. So I'm gonna click the plus button here and go under core, and you can see there's a big long list of actions that are available, such as a delay. Sometimes you just don't want things to happen right away. So maybe I'm going to delay for, I don't know, how about 20 minutes? So let's say my 20 minutes has passed by and I wanna have it do something else. Well, I can add another block in here. I'll go under core and just show you a few more of these because I think there are a lot of really helpful tools in here. Under approval, I could have it wait for approval before proceeding with the rest of the flow. So I'll just choose action, wait for approval. Let's say it was generating some content using AI for me. I wanna approve it before it goes out on social media. Well, there we go. I can go ahead and click a box to go ahead and maybe publish that tweet like we saw in the example at the beginning of the video. Let's continue perusing through the core options here because there's so many really powerful things. We looked at the code block. We've got a data mapper, so we can go ahead and do advanced mapping for data here. If we needed to write something out by hand, we could definitely do that. There's a date helper, so we can easily manipulate the format of dates. Maybe dates coming out of an application in one format and you need to translate it to another format for a different app. There's a way to do that. We can do HTTP requests, SFTP, maybe move files back and forth from an SFTP server. We've got SMTP, so we can go ahead and send out emails if you connect up your email server. I haven't gotten any connected here, but it'd be very easy for me to send a welcome email out to someone who signed up for GoCMS with this setup. So that's Active Pieces, a super exciting tool to me. Hopefully you agree. If you've got any questions, definitely leave me a comment down below. I've really only scratched the surface on what you can do with Active Pieces, but hopefully it was enough to get you intrigued. Go ahead and grab that LTD. Remember to only last for 72 hours. They're not going to extend this as far as I know. So act now. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.